Said Dorn. Welcome everyone to the Recreation Parks Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, we have a visitor tonight, uh, Sarah Cavallari, and she's representing the uh, Onslow Partnership for Children. And welcome. You're from yes. Italy. Welcome. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Okay. Well, glad to have you. Hope you enjoy our little group. The uh, Approval of agenda for a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, agenda is approved. Approval of minutes. I think we've had minutes last, last month. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No opposed? Motion carries. Okay, director's report. All right, we're going to bounce back and forth. We have a, quite a few things to update you on. One of the ones one and one to start off with is to give you an update on the Richard Ray project. If you watched the workshop meeting last Tuesday, uh, Dr. Woodruff presented to council the Richard Ray um, amphitheater project, I guess you could say. And I think each of you have a map in front of you. This map is representing the blue area that you see there is representing the retention pond that is going in um, as a result of the parking lot and the expansion that Marine Chevrolet is doing. So if you can envision that expansion on the parking lot, retention pond, and then from that retention pond, all of the dirt basically that's going to come from it, what do we do with it? So Marine Chevrolet is constructing the pond. They're giving the dirt is obviously going to go right there. And then the city has uh, moved forward with options from Dr. Woodruff to build an amphitheater. So what you're looking at on this map in the tan, orange tan, is a four-tiered um, four tiered amphitheater. So there's uh, two feet up, 10 feet back, two feet up, 10 feet back. So it will be a nice um, size. It'll be about four tiers up. Okay, there it is. Yeah. So yeah. So are you going to try and touch it? I, I'll do it as you talk. So the blue is the retention pond. The retention pond, when you look in that, um, the, the cut up at the very top <coughs> where you see like a half of a square right in there, that is actually where the amphitheater is going to go. So it's going to be a hardscape like a cement or some sort of uh, permanent flat area right there and then a wall of sorts, a fence, something decorative that will overlook the water. So it'll be pond with floating fountains. So I think they're calling for two fountains to be in the water. So it'll be attractive fountains that will be floating throughout the water. You'll see the amphitheater and then from the amphitheater, it is gonna be the seating. The idea right now is to uh, construct the amphitheater, not with, um, in the future, it'll be like a stone cap. You know, so your two feet up will be like a stone or some sort of permanent fixture 10 feet back so you have room for chairs blankets you name it anything for families and then go up the short term right now moving forward it'll be uh, landscaped to hold and then in the future we'll be able to put that those hard steps in did you say there was going to be additional parking well that's part of the discussion it hasn't oh, been decided okay. yet okay. what they do know is from the um, preferably what from the sale of the of the land that went to Marine Chevrolet uh, with that hopefully we can turn that around into a parking lot there's options of parking on uh, the master plan calls for parking along the side of the property yep um, and then also over there where Michael is saying the ex the expenses right now for the amphitheater is only about 70 72 thousand and then when you add in other amenities like electricity and some other uh, expenses, it's 65000 And then that brings us to about 200000 that will uh, for the parking lot. We're not sure what kind of parking lot. It might not be an asphalt. It might be a, a little bit of a grass lot. We're somewhere over there at the, I guess, the north face, the north end. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be, you know, it might, might 200000 is not going to get you a, paved asphalt parking lot, but it'll, it should get you something so that we can accommodate that amphitheater. Something similar to what we have at the overflow area of the commons that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. a parking lot potentially like that. It could be a hybrid of asphalt in some of that also. How big did you say for people? 
the right now we're estimating at least 400 people, I think is the number. It's a it's a pretty large it should be a pretty large space. Isn't that what we said last time on the other project? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very similar to Phillips Farm. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Woodruff did present options to council, you know, we could move forward with basically what's been proposed or we could do other things with the money that has been, um, you know, from the sale, uh, but council went ahead and voted on Tuesday night at the workshop to move forward with this plan. So, Marine Chevrolet is ready to move. You'll see some movement apparently fairly quickly. So, we'll keep you posted as we get together, but uh, yeah. So. One or the other, and this is kind of just an mm -hmm. idea. This is just, again, an idea of what it is. It isn't what we're going to build because ours is going to be grass. But uh, one of the ideas of parking also is the property that is getting developed by Marine Chevrolet on their off hours, if it's available, that's potentially parking that could be utilized when we have events. So we'll be able to utilize that if there's if there's nothing there. But but it's Can also you agree the, to that? yes, that's the, the understanding we have. Yes. Now, is this somewhere we may have the uh, the movies? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I would envision um, the movies. The plan is to make sure that there's enough power and, you know, it's a good setup. We would definitely be proactive with planning this so that we can accommodate movies and anything else we'd like to do down there. Any entertainment. Entertainment, concerts, you name it. I don't think you're going to have, if it's just a concrete thing, I don't think you'll have all the stuff you need for a concert light towers and bars and all that good stuff. Well, yeah, not right now. Well, well what we but, would hope to do is build what we would call a, the beginning of an amphitheater and depending on how it's utilized, if needed as time goes by, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, maybe not for three to five years, we would add some of those amenities if the site warranted those sorts mm -hmm. of things as we went yeah. forward. What we do know is, yes, it's not going to have the shell and maybe and all of those sorts of things. How, how much can you expand with, the, are you you bottom yourself up. I mean, how big can, can you get? How big can you go with it? If you are going to add, uh, you would think you you would want to add. Well, I think the things we're talking about adding would be more amenity driven, not space driven. Things like a shell, things like more electricity that could handle a, a different type of event. So you'd still be limited to 400. Right, I don't sure. think we're looking to expand that. So if the Beatles come back on a final tour or something <laughs> yeah, like that, that, well, the tickets will be. We might not be able okay. to come right. for those 400. Right. <laughs> so what do we plan to support with this? As well, far the, as our events goes, mm -hmm. well, I would say the movies, concerts in the concerts in the park, uh, any other competitions and or band or musical drama, anything else we can schedule there. Quick well, hundred's not really all that big. Well, again, I think it's a start in, you know, things like the jambor Jamboree, mm -hmm. potentially, and I'm not saying we would do this, but potentially that could be where entertainment would be. Mm -hmm. We may not decide to put it there, depending on the flow of the event itself, but that's a good example, and we have a decent crowd, as you all mm -hmm. know, for the Jamboree, uh, but that's an example. I'm not saying we would put it over right. there, but... Do we have dimensions for the, the, the size of it? We do. I don't have them on me, but we can certainly get those to you. Okay. Engineering has worked on this, so this is yeah. in-house. I'm curious, have you ever been to Wilmington and been to... Uh, Human Creek? No. Uh, Greenfield Creek? Greenfield with the theater? lake. Green, yeah, yeah. Greenfield Lake, yeah. So that's not overly big, right. but mm -hmm. it's much more developed than a grass hill. Sure. I mean, there, there's seats and... Right. Like restrooms, uh, concession stands. It's yeah, you know, they, and again, they charge money to go to concerts. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things we we I think council spoke to, and the manager spoke to. But again, I think it's more of a phase process as time goes by. Potentially, those are things we would look at doing. Whether it was restrooms, long run. I think in the beginning, definitely we would use the. Um, Porta potties, as we knew we were going to have events out there. My only problem is that, you know, are you going to have to, are you going to be constrained by the space that you've only got? I mean, how much can you grow with, it? or are you going to have to go somewhere else to have a place for, a, to build somewhere else for a concert or, or well, whatever? Well, I can only say it would be. Um, it would be, I would love to see that entire area full without a doubt. It would be a nice, 
long-term problem to have. But I think the seating on that would be would be uh, 400, 600 easily accommodated. Right now, we average about three, 350 for the movies. So, could the area to the, if you're looking at the screen to the left over where the amphitheater, could that be developed? Is that Jacksonville's too? This right here. Yeah. Well, the problem with that is there is a ditch running through That's there. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll fill the ditch up. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Storm water. Okay. It seems like a pretty good location because yeah. the only people you're going to tick off with the noise are going to be the yeah. guys in the fire department over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah we've, we considered that as well. Good and fine. So we just wanted to bring you up to date on, yeah. on you know, where that is, what yeah. what's happening with the commons sure and get a lot uh, more ideas. The, the piece of property and how we're going to move forward with it, hopefully. Next time you see him, tell him you want more money. <laughs> okay. Hey, the so that's police and fire department yeah. got that Taj Mahal. <laughs> so it's time for us to get some. Well, let, let's move along a little bit and we'll talk uh, about the Beirut Grove. And just so you know, we we are in the process starting this re week of really starting to amp up the work out there for the Grove. And as you know, there's 273 trees we're looking to plant out there in mid-September and then bring in uh, a first load in mid-September of about 160 and then the remaining in the 1st of October. We hope to have that done. But what we're working on now, if you've driven by that area, which is off the bypass, heading towards Wilmington or behind DOT DMV heading towards Wilmington, uh, depending on which way you're, you're uh, traveling. Um, the hill out there, which you see a lot of dirt, we, we've ramped up activity out there. Hopefully in the next two to three weeks, you'll start to see some landscaping going, going in on those hills, on that hill and starting to beautify it as well as beautifying uh, the whole grounds out there. So look for that. Hopefully a month from now I'll have, uh, be able to talk to you about what we've done since today. Any questions about that area and that project? If you haven't noticed, I think the last time we were here we talked about the island at New River uh, that I was working on and we have finished that island on New River and New River Drive and Onslow Drive as it intersects at the stoplight. We've uh, redone that area. It looks a, a little bit better. And what we've also done in the long run is um, taken away a couple of hours of maintenance from us a week to roughly maybe an hour a week. So <clears throat> in our effort to be more efficient, that's going to help us in the long run save taxpayer dollars and our dollars and allow us to do some different things as we move forward. Um, one small thing I'm sure a lot of you are going to be interested in, the trails bid was awarded last week. So what we hope to see is the construction of that hopefully begin in the next month or so. And then uh, let us take us down the road to finally connecting the trail in front of the Scales Creek area mm -hmm. and with the downtown area. So that'll be neat to see that process take place and see that trail go in and for those that were at one time part of Trails and Greenways, so I'm sure that's near and dear to you. Um, and Friday, the request for quotes, request for bids, request for bids, proposals, for proposals are due for the splash pad at Jack Amiet. So we'll start, you know, next week we'll be able to sit down and take a look at those and see what we've gotten from vendors around, not just North Carolina, around the country to what they would propose we put in there. As we get that information, we'll be glad to make you aware of that. That's pretty much it from the park side, other than we are continuing mowing, weed eating, blowing, and trying to beautify Jacksonville as we go. Any questions on those? I'll we'll move on the program. Thank you. Um, Anything else? Okay. All right, so program updates. Uh, we have summer day camp. We're over halfway done because uh, year-round school have already, has already gone back. So we're operating that program as well as the summer day camp, but everything has gone really smoothly this summer. So um, we're happy about that. We have, uh, we're in the middle of all of our concert series, movie series, uh, summer 
park series. We've added a new um, element or a new series of in the park. We just finished up Bubble Bash in the park. We're trying to expand to different locations. That was at Phillips Park. Our next one is um, Kite Day, and that'll be at Sturgeon City. And then the one after that is Chalk It Up, and that one will be at Riverwalk. So we've got those series, and we are in the middle of our concert series down at Riverwalk Park, so those are going well. Also wanted to let you know an update on, I think I've mentioned to you in the past about our flag football. We're working closely with MCCS um, aboard uh, Camp Lejeune and the folks over there to get a flag football program started. As of right now, it looks like we have enough for a couple of teams and we're working out logistics and the vetting process and getting our participants. I think it'll be a fairly uh, uh, good transition. I think it'll be a smooth system by the time we get our kids practicing on their fields, but it looks like we're gonna be able to practice and play on their artificial turf fields. So that'll be a real nice treat for anybody that hasn't ever had that opportunity. So we'll keep you posted, um, but we're real excited to be able to partner up with, with the MCCS folks and, and provide that program. Other than that, Fall sports registration, um, officially we're in late registration. That is for fall uh, boys, uh, baseball, uh, volleyball, and um, flag, football. flag football. So I knew there was three of them. So yeah, we're doing registration for those and that will carry on through the end of, uh, end of this week. And then adult softball provided the rain we had last week. We've been able to play and he's doing really well on his schedule. And, you know, anytime rain comes along, we're like, oh, okay, can we get these games in? But for the most part, we're staying right on track. We're real fortunate on our fields to, to be able to get that water off as quickly as possible. Not as much as we had last week. That just didn't happen anywhere. <laughs> it was a lot of rain quickly. But for the most part, everything's right on track, and we're having a good season so far in all of our programs. Senior program's doing really well. Lots of trips have been extremely successful. Um, I'll get kudos to Jim Wheeler over here. He's he's pretty much our lead on a lot of those trips, and they have all been full and have been received extremely extremely well. So, thank you uh, the, for your other hat that you put on your your many 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 hats that you. Just put the on. driver. I brought them all back. You brought well, some, of them wanted, yeah, that, some of them I wanted. Some of them I wanted. Well, bringing them back, <laughs> they just want to go again. So thank you for that. Those trips are going really well. Those day trips. So. Um, everything's going along really well. That's in the programming. Any questions on any of those or sure. thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I know the seniors have been working on uh, events for the fall and winter. Mm -hmm. I know that you published a spring and summer mm -hmm. catalog, mm -hmm. and I guess there'll be a, a fall winter mm -hmm. catalog. Any idea when that'll? Uh, we have just gotten that to the media folks. Amanda heads that project up. So we're hoping that by the end of August. Sometime we'll, in August. Yeah. Okay, late August. We'll have that printed and out for distribution. It's our it's our fairly large booklet, and we try to get as much as we can in there. So it takes a little bit of time to accumulate it and make it look pretty. But for the most part, hopefully, beginning of September, we'll be distributing that. And it has all your great trips in there. Any other any other questions, comments, feedback? Just the the flyer and the water bill that we get in the mm -hmm. city. It's, I think it's a great idea. They have that. You know, I post in there about the mm -hmm. events, recreational events. I think that's good. Yeah. Thank you. They do a great job in media services. They just take a look at our calendar and put it in there. So they do it. Uh, they do it automatically, which is great for us. But it's really good. Thank you. Yeah. I got one more quick thing. You, when you said fire, it made me think of something. If you didn't happen to watch the workshop or council meeting the other night, one of the things that has happened out at the Commons recently was there was some potential wetlands that had been identified and we were the city was able to hire a contractor to come in and work through um, remediating I guess you could say the property out there and doing a control burn and I believe until 2020 mm -hmm. I think it is mm -hmm. that there's no worry that as time goes by until then at least that those areas cannot won't be declared wetlands till then so that's, that's a great thing to have, have happened. I'm not saying we're going to build anything by then, but if the city were to grow in that area, there's the ability to do that without having to worry about wetlands right now. So that's, that's very important. Michael, generally, where are those located? Um, mostly from, uh, if you're familiar with the commons uh, and you're familiar with where the parks building is, mm -hmm. 
uh, to the, if you're standing on Commons Drive North, uh, looking towards the elementary school across the street, there's a, a lift station there. Mm -hmm. Basically from there That's going literally all the way back to the EOC. Uh, uh, okay. oh, okay. yeah. And there are some <laughs> other areas that was the focus area, but. Yeah. Mm. I will actually remind you, I just thought of something else. Tuesday, uh, August 4th, National Night Out. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have a booth there, so feel free to come on out. We would love to have you stop by. Uh, it is Tuesday, August 4th. So we will have our table there. Giving and that starts at 5 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Would you like to have a uh, representation from the committee there, if we can make it? Sure, we'd love to have it. Absolutely. We have our booth uh, covered, but yeah, okay. we would love we to would have like some. To have you there, we would love to have you there. Mm -hmm. Help. Tell all the folks what we do. <laughs> okay. I've got a question for uh, for Mike. Any with all this um, recent uh, folks getting hit on the side of the road? parks and maintenance they of course they're on the road cutting grass any concerns the staff any safety things well, you guys have been covering with them i think we're always concerned uh we meet with our crews every week and talk about things we need to be doing to be safe whether it's uh, making sure your fluids are intake or well to um, how we transport mowers things like that you know knock on one and hope nothing like that ever happens uh, any accidents like that but you know we try and be as safe as we can and it is a focus do we need to get the grass mowed you bet but we need to be as safe as possible in doing those things and that is I think uh, what we try and push to all of our staff members out there that we've got to be safe okay thank you any further Program updates or comments? Okay, new business, old business, selection of chair and co-chair. I know the question was posed at last month's meeting as to whether the chair and co-chair could succeed themselves. Um, once, once you've served your initial year, you can serve a second term of one year as chair or co-chair. So get that okay. information out there. Motion to keep chair and co-chair <laughs> intact. Second. 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 Any opposed? All in favor. <laughs> wow, that was quick. Very All in favor. Aye. Uh, uh, Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job, Rick. That was like 15 seconds. Very good, Laura. Somebody's ready to move on. Yeah, real quick. Okay. Maybe too good to post it. Next. Okay. Discussion of meeting schedule as requested by Lori Reddy. Okay, Lori. Um, I've just taken a look at what we've done over the last year. I know we spoke to this a little while ago. I uh, did some research, looked at a couple of the boards that uh, are at the city. I just think for for cost savings, we could go to every other month. Um, my proposal would be that we at least meet in June and August, start of the summer, the end of the summer of programs, and then filter it out from there, which I think that would start us in February. Cost savings, you know, the guys in the video, the ladies in the video, the three that sit across from me, um, time that it takes to put this stuff together for us. Plus, we can get some more members, I do believe. That's my fight. I'm a quarterly. You want to make a motion? Sir, a motion. Well, they said quarterly. Any discussion? I guess. Laurie, so you're saying that basically starting in August. We well, no, we, we, I think we should at least meet at the start of the summer, at the end of the summer. So keep the months in mind, June well, and August. You go June, skip July, August. Right. So then, if the proposal is to go every other month, it would start okay, August. Would, August would be our first month that we'd meet. Yeah. Well, for calendars, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and All then the we'd skip it and yeah. go every other month. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Skip September, go November. Skip. Let's say for discussion purposes, if we do have a motion, as part of that motion, I recommend that we also include the requirement to check our parks. Do we still individually do that monthly and then report at whatever frequency we just have a meeting or do we just do it whatever frequency we, quarterly bi-monthly or whatever i think that I think should be part of the motion probably good to uh, visit the parks monthly 
And then instead of then just call direct. Just call or email, or whatever email. you're okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever you're call. comfortable with. I think I think email is good. Uh, okay. If that could be part of the motion, that'd be my only recommendation. Motion. Right. How about uh, we discuss quarterly, so we would hit each season basically. Okay, quarterly. Your Do we have a second for this motion? No, we well, have we a motion. Just yes. discussion. Yes, discussion. Yes, discussion. Okay. yes sir. Uh, would quarterly would put you with four meetings. Yeah. Four, meetings yeah. four meetings a year. Four meetings a year. Versus six. July, you go ahead together. April, June, September. So mm -hmm. it'd still hit you within those start and end of summer type of, of schedule if you did that somewhat. You'd still be meeting in June, which would be the end of the school year, start of the summer, and you'd... How would that impact us when it comes time for things like um, CIP, uh, the budget process? Yeah. Does that put us around well, that time? Well, we start or? our budget process. We start our budget process in December. We'll have some preliminary information <coughs> ready for you in January, and then you would not meet until more than likely it was adopted already. No. Yeah, you'd, you'd miss... I support this every other month. Okay. You could either you could also call a meeting if yes, call that's right. You could always call a meeting yeah. if, if necessary. You certainly right. can do that. I mean, right. do we typically meet on December? In December? We typically do not meet in December. So just doing a, a rough calendar on every other month. August, just, October, November. Um, it would fall on. March. December would be a, a month you would typically meet on the every other month's schedule. Unless we kick there. back and start with July. Right. This time. Because right. 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 you're meeting at the end of July, which is pretty right. as close to August as you can get. That's correct. Yeah. So, so then you would go May, end of May. Which puts you in the beginning July. of summer. It would still put you in the beginning yeah. of summer. So you could do that schedule. Ready for motion? I'm ready. Okay, I move we move our next year's or our next year's meetings to every other month starting with July. Starting now. Yeah, starting now, July, with uh, park reports uh, monthly via email, except for when we have our meetings. I'll second that motion. All, of, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Most carries. Very good. So, so we will meet again in So you've September. got, just so you know, July, September, November, January, March, and, and May. And those are actually the odd number months, so okay. as you number them. Oh, good. So and we're when is our meeting, um, the joint, January, when is that January, typically? Oh, no, I can't be in September. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to check on that. We'll Still check on the joint meeting uh, that I'll takes place. I'll get you a calendar together to if, if we, how your yeah. meetings are if, yeah. if we have to... Have an extra meeting, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. We're losing Great. six meetings anyway, so to add one more would be that bad of a. Yeah, okay. I agree. I mean, we're always going to have, I mean, I'm willing to meet anytime we have to come together if there's something special we have to look at. And, and is sure. the expectation that everybody would send their park report in at the same time? Every month I did. Or just nice have a reminder, I, but uh, yeah, two days. I can take care of it. I just, just want to make sure if you do yeah. or you don't. I, just I need reminders of just meetings. <laughs> Thank you for that, too. I count on those. So, park reports still do at the same time every month. One will be at a Sounds meeting good. and one will be that via email good. that we'll discuss internally. And we will get a reminder. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, then, one of the nice things about the reminder is if, if you do it email wise, is we do a reply to all, then everybody sees what the report is that everybody's yeah, done. True. And, true. and yeah. if you'll do that, then yeah. you'll see, maybe you'll see the same thing happening at all the parks, or you'll have a question answered that. You didn't know right. to look for. Right. Should we send it to all then? I mean, yeah, I would say reply yeah. all. Reply to all. Right. Would you like us to give out a report to you? You know, updates on anything? Would that be helpful as well? So we somewhat keep the agenda, but we just do it via email or no? I, I think what would be best is if kind of like using the extra meetings, if we were going to have an extra meeting. If we have something that is important that you need to know, we'll email you that. Other than that, We'll see you each meeting. If not, that could turn into, yes. you know, monthly meetings via email. And I don't know that we want to get involved in yeah. that. But well, we, we do a, a, every week we get a thing from the planning department. And even though I do appreciate it, I mean, there are times when we get 
just nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just four cents is nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah. Okay. I heard a joke <laughs> from the IT folks down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> they're celebrating. Yeah, they're celebrating. Okay, any other discussion on that? Okay. The Planning Advisory Board Liaison Report. Okay, oh. well, um, once again, unfortunately or fortunately, we have no meeting on uh, the last time. So I think that's three that we've been without since I've been chairman. And uh, the the development report was about as bare also. So unfortunately, I've got nothing to bring to you. And council liaison report is not here. Okay. Member comments. Anybody have anything they'd like to, before we go into the park reports, anybody, anything, anybody would have anything to say, comments, anything at all? Okay. Wooten Park. Uh, went by there this morning, and obviously from the weekend there was some a little bit of trash, but it wasn't bad. I mean, that's to be expected. The only thing that I saw that the, the little swings for the little kids, to the baby, the baby swings. You got the swings. Yeah. Uh, at the top, the, the, the paint is rusted, and you always worry about one of those. You always worry, look up there and make sure everything's solid. But I'd like for somebody to look at that and just to make sure that, I mean, it's, it's, it and has, it there is rust. And... I know the little kids aren't too heavy, but still, that's a concern when dealing with children or anybody for that matter, but especially children. So I like for them to look at that. If it's yep. two swings up at the top, everything else was fine, very neat. You know, the water fountain worked mm -hmm. and uh, it was in good shape. And uh, it, was, it was good. Lori? Uh, parks look great. I went by a couple of times over the last uh, couple of weeks and talked to some folks just to get their uh, their comments of the park and everything positive. Everything. I uh, Jack and me and I was by there Friday after Friday night and spoke to a family who said it's very ever since in their words they cleaned it up, and put some fresh flowers and stuff there. They just like to go and sit there and uh, watch their kids in the afternoons play. So very positive. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, Homer. Uh, no, no problem with Branchwood. Uh, went down there, and it looks as bare as usual. Uh, well, we can talk a little bit about that real quickly. And, and if you did see the council meeting the other night, um, Branchwood, uh, right now, we're we're kind of gauging the temperature on that part to see uh, what kind of response we would get from the community if we slowly pulled some equipment out and if you're not familiar with with where the park is it sits at the end of Autobahn one of the, the it's a great little neighborhood park mm -hmm. uh, the biggest drawback to it is there's no accessibility really for the public when it comes to parking there's not right. a parking lot there it's just right. literally at the end of the road yeah. and um, but if it's a neighborhood park why are you gonna need a lot of parking well I think the question becomes, is it really being utilized as much? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was the idea of slowly taking some of the equipment out to seeing what type of feedback we received as, as a city. And I will tell you, we, we have received some feedback, uh, probably around 10 to 12 phone calls. And uh, I forwarded that information with Dr. Woodruff, and we've talked about it, and uh, you know, right now, uh, he's made council aware of it, and as we move forward, uh, those decisions will be made on what to do, but right now, we're still gauging the temperature. I didn't mean to interrupt, sir. No, I'm glad you said that. I didn't want to say anything about it Thank unless you. you just wanted to mention it. I'm glad you did. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I meant by there. <laughs> but it, 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 was, it was that park, if I remember correctly, was placed there about near the end of when we started doing a lot of neighborhood parks so it's sort of like the well ran dry and they stopped you know they could have gone into the entrance and done some tiny little parking area but for some reason all that stopped so that's why you get that end of the road chain across the thing and you're parking in somebody in front of somebody's house right. if you're there and back way back when it was just 
uh, the people in Sharon Hills and maybe the people in Branchwood right. and people in Aldersgate, those weren't very built up neighborhoods and now they are. So mm, I don't see many people walking from the farthest part of Branchwood yeah. all the way down Audubon just to go to that park. Yeah. Not when they can just about, if you're walking, you can just about go jump the street and run to the commons, you know, and if you're going to get in the vehicle, you definitely would go to the commons. So it's a question of whether it's outlived its original right. intent and whether we can do something better with that area right. and not get yelled at in the process. Right, and that's yeah. part of gauging the temperature. Yeah. Right. Um, Sherwood Forest was fine, except um, I think I mentioned this last month, and the grass is back again, so. In the, um, the ground. Yes, sir. Right. And um, Phillips Park, um, again, same thing coming on the grass in the uh, in the sandy areas, but um, what little I saw just a little trash, but I think that was peripheral. Uh, notice that word. It was <laughs> peripheral trash blown in off the sidewalk from the from the businesses next door. So I, it didn't look like the kind of stuff that people were there at the park and just threw it out. It looked like stuff that blew over. So, and I think you're going to have that anytime you're next to a business. The paint shop there with the dumpster dumpster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm happy they got the glass up, so. Oh, yeah. They, I, I talked about that. That used to be, uh, gave me something to talk about for the last couple of years, and then they got rid of it, so. But uh, other than that, everything's everything's fine. Okay. Steve? Okay. Uh, up to Northeast Creek today, it was incredibly hot, but there were people out there playing Frisbee golf. Uh, I mean, I've even seen them playing that in the rain, so. Okay. Uh, Dedicated the only time I haven't seen them playing is at night. Who knows? Uh, the trees you moved down from the uh, Beirut Memorial thing, mm -hmm. they are not doing good at all. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, the, down by the uh, boat ramp, those new ones there, there's six, and I'm being very generous because one of them's only got two leaves left on it. Right. <laughs> it still have any leaves. And up by the parking lot, by the playground, I think there was two got to talk to them, Steve. I guess. <laughs> well, you know, when we outside, moved good. those, we knew moving them. Yeah, it would stress yeah, them. Yeah. We would, were and rolling the dice a little, but we wanted to try and keep them right. alive if we could. And now, They were pretty much doomed. Were they putting right? them in a different environment, we thought maybe, but... I guess if one survives, you know, we're, we're ahead of the game. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, the boardwalk stuff still looking pretty sad. Uh, there are people out there fishing. Uh, they were maintaining the baseball field at the time, so it looked real nice. And then I went downtown and uh, went to uh, Kerr Street. Looks fine. Uh, there wasn't a soul out there because it was a million degrees. But across the street at the fishing pier there at Willingham, people fishing. Yeah. Every time I go down yeah. there, there's somebody <laughs> fishing. Yeah. And then uh, went by uh, Willingham and Riverwalk, and they both look really nice. Uh, the, First quadrant's getting kind of bare on grass. Uh, Our intentions are to resod that area just after the fall. Yeah, it'd be a good time to do it. Yeah. Bigger's probably going to get beat up even worse the next right. few months. <laughs> and there were some guys out there cutting grass, but they weren't our guys. Probably on the parking lot to the, the, the open field on the right. I don't know. That some trailer, but it didn't look like the normal city guys because they're always wearing you know the fluorescent vests and stuff. But what the heck, they want to make it look good. Okay. Uh, Warren? Yeah, uh, Woodlands Park looks fine. Uh, Sturgeon City is fine. Uh, as you said, Steve, there was a father and son at a pier We're down on one end there fishing. Uh, and of course, this past weekend, I don't know about y'all, but uh, yeah, I don't know it was 65 or 66 degrees when I got up. Saturday morning, I said, man, you know, I said, it's not September yet, is it? But anyhow, it was a very pleasant uh, change, especially for the last part of July. Uh, trail looks fine. I uh, always look forward to Friday when the guys come by blowing everything off. And they're still working on uh, that TT1 gate. Is that, do you know how not sure when they're going to be finished. To go and I got to tell you, we got an interesting, I got a call on Saturday from one of the trail ride riders that I guess somebody had taken a bollard out, out on the trail. And, you know, he thought maybe we had done it when we were mowing and forgot to put it back. And 
uh, and that could happen, but I think there was a contractor or somebody yeah. that did that actually because we when we left on Friday, all the bollards were in, so yeah. uh, and, and it could have been part of that also. But yeah, that's we'll have to try fun. and keep our eyes out to make yeah. sure because, as you know, if you take that bollard out, yeah. there's literally a hole there. And yeah, if you're most, riding a bike, I don't know that you're looking for that hole. Mo most right. <laughs> I was going to say most of the time when the bollards are down is when the guys are mowing or right. working out there in some manner, right. you know. So you're going to know that a little yes, bit because right. you see the work. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jim. Yeah, Lauren mentioned the uh, nice weather on Saturday. I, I rode my bike through a Brook Valley. There was a ton of people there taking advantage of the nice mm -hmm. weather. Yeah. Uh, I went back this afternoon just to do a, a closer check. There were three there this afternoon, and they talked about the sand and the grass infiltration. It looks like people have been working on the sand grass border there at Brook Valley because it's been disturbed. It looks like the grass has been trimmed back. We're, so. on, a, we're on a little bit of a, a push to get our playgrounds grass free, right? But it looked look pretty good. And then I uh, went by North Woods on the way here this afternoon. Uh, they had gone on a field trip this afternoon, which was good because the air conditioning is broken there. But, <laughs> but it's being repaired. They said they worked on it today, and uh, they, they plan on getting it fixed tomorrow. Uh, she also mentioned the water fountain there had broken, and they came by the Inside next day. The it's, building. It's, it's fixed, yeah. yeah. So a uh, real good response there. Uh, that's all I've got to report. To be, piggyback on Jim, my daughter will me make sure that everyone knew the air conditioner was out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other? Uh, I forgot to mention the piece of playground equipment, the, that teeter totter thingy. You've replaced it, very good, but there's still no big slide. <laughs> Noted. We'll, we'll take that from Branchwood. There's a lot of Branchwood. All right. <laughs> but there were people also fishing at Phillips Park, so you, they didn't want to be left out. It was a father and son fishing on the. I don't know what they were catching because right. it looked like some pretty murky water in Cheney Creek. But that's why it's called fishing. Who were they at home? <laughs> Phillips Park. Phil, oh, Phillips. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they had a sewage spill. Uh, it was in the paper today. I guess it occurred last Thursday, which took a while to get in the paper. But as near as I can tell, the sewage spill occurred there off of Western. There's a lift station right behind where the old checkers used to be. I don't know what that building is now. But they said 3,000 gallons of untreated sewage got into. Uh, that's actually Sandy Run Branch up, up there, which feeds into Cheney Creek. So if he was catching something there at Phillips Park, it may or may not have been uh, affected. Uh, date of next meeting, Amanda. September 28th. September 28th? Yeah. We'll send you a reminder. Yes, I'll, I'll Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Sarah, appreciate okay. you coming by. Thank you for appreciate it. letting me go. Enjoyed it. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you.